Every soldier must have his rifle, and every golfer must have his golf clubs. Every fisherman had better not go down to the fishing hole without bringing his fishing pole. But what about diabetics? Is there any particular tool of the trade which they had better not leave home without? In the video that follows, I'll be doing a couple of blood sugar tests that involve beans, specifically lentil soup. But I'll also be talking about the power of the post-meal test and demonstrating just why and how this is so vitally important for the diabetic. When I think about my struggles with runaway blood sugar and how I found the answers to overcome it, one of the major weapons in my arsenal was what I call the post-meal test. This simply means I test my blood sugar an hour to an hour and a half after I eat a meal to see exactly how it's affected my blood sugar. I cannot tell you just how much this has helped me. It helps me in two different ways. First, it shows me which foods and which meals are going to be gentle with my blood sugar and keeps it in the boundaries which I set for it. If the number is too high, it means I'll have to make some adjustments. Eat less of this food, more of that food, eliminate this food, replace it with that food, and keep on adjusting and modifying until I see the numbers as low as I want to see them. But there's a second benefit from these post-meal tests. They provide incredible motivation for me to stay on track and eat wisely. Seeing those high numbers makes me sick. <laughs> I can't stand it. When I see those high numbers, I know I have to make some changes. Motivation springs up at me from those numbers. And it's also true of low numbers. When I eat a meal or a particular food and then find that it barely raises my blood sugar, it's like a high to me. I love it. And I'm motivated to keep with that food or that meal so that I can see more good numbers. But if I never tested myself or if I only tested myself in the morning before I eat, I wouldn't get all that information and there would be little motivation for me to change. In this case, I'm going to be eating beans. I've got some bean soup here. Beans are high in protein, but they do have quite a few carbs. But there are certain beans which have far more fiber to them than others. And these are the ones I'll always choose. In this case, I'm going to eat lentil soup made from scratch by my wife. Lentils are one of the highest beans in fiber. So they're going to affect my blood sugar much less than many other beans. But regardless of that, I'm never content just to take it by faith that this is a safe food just by the number of fiber or the number of carbs. I want to test myself and find out exactly how I respond. I don't take a large bowl and for this reason, I'll usually need some other food to help me fill up. Today, I have a celery stick with some peanut butter on it. This should not add too many carbs to the beans, but I will test myself an hour and 15 minutes after eating to see precisely how my body handles this meal. From past experience, I think I should be okay, but we'll find out. I'll see you in about an hour and a half and we'll see the results. Well, it has been an hour and 15 minutes since I finished my bowl of beans and my celery stick with peanut butter. Normally, I wait about an hour to test my blood sugar, but in this case, I waited longer because beans take a little bit longer to reach their peak. They're a little bit uh, more fibrous and they will take longer before you hit your peak. So in this case, an hour and 15 minutes, not that much difference. So I'm gonna go ahead and test my blood sugar. We've got our little table camera here to record it as I test it. You'll get to see it just as quickly as I do and find out what kind of a score I got. It's always an exciting thing to do this for me. I never know exactly what it's gonna be, although when I test it enough, I get a pretty good idea. So let's see exactly what we get here. And there it is, it is a 112, 112. So 112 is good. I'm not uh, bothered by that in the least. And when you test yourself, you're normally gonna either find out that your score is good and you've got room at the top where you could add something else in, or your score is bad and you need to cut back, or your score is right around where you might wanna see it. I give myself up to 140. 
And as long as I score under 140, I feel like I'm doing okay. In this case, 112 is great. So I'm not at all worried about that. In fact, tomorrow I'm gonna to take the same test and instead of the celery with peanut butter, and celery has almost no carbs to it, like maybe two per stick, uh, I'm going to do a half an apple with peanut butter, which is going to in, involve a few more carbs, but I think I'll still be okay. But this is what you do. You test yourself. If, if it's a good score, you try other things, and uh, eventually you get a whole repertoire of meals and foods that you know are good and safe and are not going to bother your blood sugar, and you can enjoy your meals without worry, without guilt, and stay healthy. So, I'll see you back here tomorrow with another blood sugar test. Beans again. Next time, it'll be half an apple with peanut butter. It is another lunchtime and another bowl of my wife's marvelous lentil soup. The thing about lentils is they are high in fiber. Beans all have fiber, but some beans have a lot more fiber than other beans. And for people that have insulin resistance, you want the most fiber you can possibly get. So lentils is a great choice. And so I've got soup as I did yesterday. But one of the things I've been emphasizing is if your score is low enough, you say to yourself, you know, I could get away with a little more carbs in that meal and it would still work. So yesterday with the lentil soup, with the celery and peanut butter, I had a 112, which is considerably lower than my limit that I set for myself of 140. I don't want it to go over 140. So today I'm going to have something with a few more carbs, and that is an apple. Well, I said yesterday I'd have half of an apple, but these apples are so scrawny <laughs> that I think I'm going to have three-fourths of an apple. And we'll just see if we can still stay under that 140 limit when I test myself an, an hour after I eat. So I'll cut this into quarters, and we'll put some peanut butter on it, and we'll see. Uh, whether I can keep under that 140 limit. Okay, I've cut it into quarters. I have thrown away one of the quarters, so it's going to be three quarters of a small apple with peanut butter on them, and then my lentil soup. And, you know, there's just no book you can read that's going to tell me how this is going to affect my blood sugar. But my monitor is going to tell me an hour after I eat. So I'm going to enjoy my lentils, enjoy my apple, three quarters of a small apple with peanut butter. Be back an hour after I finish, and we'll find out what it did to my blood sugar. I started out at 96, so that's a pretty good number for me. We'll see how far it rises. Earlier I said I'd be back an hour after I finished eating, then I realized that with beans I normally wait an hour and 15 minutes because beans seem to reach uh, cause your blood sugar to reach its peak a little bit later than other foods like breads and cereals and so forth. So it has been an hour and 15 minutes since I finished the last bite of the soup and the apple with peanut butter. And now we're ready to see what it did. Yesterday, when we had the soup and the celery with peanut butter, I was in really good shape. How's it gonna be this time? Well, let's find out. You may wonder, do you ever get tired of sticking your finger? I really don't because the information it gives me is so important that uh, it just doesn't bother me. And here we go. And there it is, a 119. Well, yesterday with the celery, it was at 112. Today with the apple, three quarters of an apple, three quarters of a small apple, <laughs> mind you, it would have been a different story with a big one. But three quarters of a small apple and peanut butter plus the lentil soup, and I scored 119. What does that tell me? It tells me this is a safe meal. Now, normally I wouldn't just take one test uh, and just settle it forever. You know, it's good to test the same meals later on in your uh, life, you know, later on in the year or every couple of years. But uh, after having done a number of tests with lentil soup and things like celery and peanut butter and apples and peanut butter, I know that when I sit down and eat that meal, I'm okay, I'm safe. My blood sugar is not going out of control. Can it go out of control? You better believe it can. Uh, some foods I could eat that would drive it well past 200, but not lentil soup and uh, apple with peanut butter or lentil soup and celery with peanut butter. Well, anybody with a little sense would know that if some meals will drive your blood sugar crazy and send it way high to the races and other meals just keep it calm, keep it under control, 
then you want to go with the meals that are gentle with your blood sugar. Not just so you can get a good number, but so that you can be healthy.